Life's end, isn't it beautiful? It's almost tragic. When life ends, it gives off a final lingering aroma. Light is but a farewell gift from the darkness to those on their way to die. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Waiting for your birth, your growth, and the finality of today. Boss, why are you doing this? Why? To make the world one again. The world used to be whole. But with the end of the Second World War, the philosophers began to fight amongst themselves, and the world was torn apart. The Cobras, my comrades, who trained and fought alongside me, were torn apart as well. The foibles of politics and the march of time can turn friends into enemies just as easily as the wind changes. Ridiculous, isn't it? Yesterday's ally becomes today's opposition. And this Cold War? Think back. When I was leading the Cobras, America and Russia were fighting together. Now, consider whether America and Russia will still be enemies in the 21st century. Somehow, I doubt it. Enemies change along with the times, the flow of the ages, and we soldiers are forced to play along. I didn't raise you and shape you into the man you are today just so we could face each other in battle. A soldier's skills aren't meant to be used to hurt friends. So then what is an enemy? Is there such a thing as an absolute timeless enemy? There is no such thing, and never has been. And the reason is that our enemies are human beings like us. They can only be our enemies in relative terms. The world must be made whole again. The philosophers must be reunited. I will devote my skills to that purpose. And with the Colonel's money, I will achieve that end. Just as I once created the Cobras. They are my family. I may no longer be able to bear children, but I still have a family. It was November 1st, 1951. I was in the Nevada desert, participating in atomic testing. The name Nevada is derived from Spanish, covered in snow, white as snow. And snow is exactly what I saw in that Nevada desert. It froze my blood white. Snake. You were an atomic test subject, weren't you? On Bikini Atoll. That's part of the reason I was drawn to you. You and I are alike. We're both slowly being eaten away by the karma of others. We'll never have the chance to die peacefully of old age. We have no tomorrow. But we can still have hope for the future. In 1960, I saw a vision of the ideal future from space. Three years earlier, the Soviet Union had succeeded in launching Sputnik, the first man-made satellite in history, into orbit. This came as a huge shock to the United States. In response, America threw everything it had into its own manned spaceflight project, the Mercury Program. Even as the Soviets seemed poised to send their first man into space, America was still experimenting with chimpanzees and rockets. The government wanted human data. 
so they secretly decided to send a human being into space. I was the one they chose. At the time, they didn't have the technology to block out cosmic rays, and whoever they sent up would inevitably be exposed to heavy radiation. That's why they chose me. After all, I'd already been irradiated once. Of course, you won't find any of this in the history books. I could see the planet as it appeared from space. That's when it finally hit me. Space exploration is nothing but another game in the power struggle between the U.S. and the USSR. Politics, economics, the arms race, they're all just arenas for meaningless competition. I'm sure you can see that, but the Earth itself has no boundaries. No East, no West, no Cold War. And the irony of it is, the United States and the Soviet Union are spending billions on their space programs and the missile race only to arrive at the same conclusion. In the 21st century, everyone will be able to see that we are all just inhabitants of a little celestial body called Earth. A world without communism or capitalism, that is the world I wanted to see. But reality continued to betray me. In 1961, I was sent to Cuba, to Bahia de Cochinos. It was part of a CIA-sponsored invasion under the guise of taking Cuban exiles back to their country. But the U.S. government betrayed them. Our weak-kneed president held back their air support. Defenseless, the exiles were annihilated by the Cuban army. All I could do was watch in silence. I was set up by the very country I'd sacrificed so much for, by the very government I dedicated my life to defending. I was driven from the surface world, and I went underground. Then, two years ago, I faced the sorrow, my old comrade in battle. He was my friend. But one of us had to die. I was left with no choice. The sorrow gave his life for me. There is no enmity between us. One must live and one must die. That was the mission. The ones who gave me that mission were the philosophers. Early in the 20th century, the true holders of power in the United States, the Republic of China, and the newly formed Soviet Union gathered together in a secret meeting that would later be known as the Wiseman's Committee. The secret pact they formed there marked the beginning of the philosophers. But the last of the original members died in the 1930s. After that, the organization began to run out of control and the Wiseman's Committee degenerated into a mere shell of its former self. The philosophers of today have no sense of good or evil. Their influence extends to countries and organizations involved in every aspect of every war. They have become war itself. That's how they operate. The sacrifices of war cause a shift in the times. This shift leads to renewed conflict and in turn triggers the next war. Like a nuclear chain reaction, each conflict sparks countless others, forming an endless spiral that will continue on for eternity. Do you understand what I'm saying, Snake? By consuming me and you, the philosophers intend to keep that cycle going forever. It was my father who explained all of this to me. He was one of them. You see, I am the last remaining child of the philosophers. But after he revealed the truth, my father was killed by that same shapeless, formless organization. And my father isn't the only thing the philosophers have taken from me. In June of 1944, the Cobras and I took part in the landing at Normandy. 
We'd been given a top secret mission to locate and destroy enemy V2 rocket installations. I was pregnant at the time. The sorrow was the father. I gave birth on the field of battle. A beautiful baby boy. But my child was snatched away from me by the philosophers. Look at this scar. This is proof that I was once a mother. I gave up my body and my child for my country. There is nothing left inside me now. Nothing at all. No hatred, not even regret. And yet sometimes at night, I can still feel the pain creeping up inside me, slithering through my body like a snake. I've never talked this much about myself before. Thanks. Thanks for listening to me. I feel content. Snake. Commence the operation. I raised you. I loved you. I've given you weapons, taught you techniques, endowed you with knowledge. There is nothing more for me to give you. All that's left for you to take is my life, by your own hand. One must die, and one must live. No victory, no defeat. The survivor will carry on the fight. It is our destiny. The one who survives will inherit the title of boss. And the one who inherits the title of boss will face an existence of endless battle. I'll give you 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, MiGs will come and bomb the hell out of this place. If you can beat me in less than 10 minutes, you'll be able to escape in time. Let's make this the greatest 10 minutes of our lives, Jack. Boss? You're a soldier. Finish your mission. Prove your loyalty. Face me. Let's see what you're made of. So. Mein dritter... Ach so, er macht gar nichts. Das ist mein dritter Versuch. Und Snake denkt sich einfach am Start, wir machen nix. So, scheißegal. Ach, da ist er. Ich finde, man kann sie viel zu wenig treffen. Das ist total bescheuert. Ich meine, die liegt da eh nur auf dem Boden, ne? So dumm. Ach, da ist noch mehr. Eine Schusswunde, okay. Ach, ein Messer, Messer reicht, okay. Ja, wir haben jetzt auch keine Zeit für sowas. Verstehe. So, alles klar. Wir müssen uns ein bisschen beeilen halt, ne? Weil so viel Zeit ist ja nicht. Waffe immer wegstecken, damit sie die nicht kaputt machen kann. Und dann ist gut. What the fuck? Was war das denn? Blöde Kuh, ey. Ohne Spaß, ne? Gut, das geht nicht. Ja, mehr Treffen geht natürlich nicht, klar. Das finde ich, find ich ein bisschen blöd. Ich meine, die liegt auf dem Boden. Warum kann ich sie nicht treffen, solange sie einfach nur fliegt auf dem Boden liegt? Ohne Spaß, ey. Das ist so dumm, ne? Wo ist sie denn? Ich sehe sie nicht mal. Hä? Ah. Ja. Okay. Das Kontern ist halt schwer. Es geht, aber es ist schwer. Ach komm! 
Wann muss ich denn kontern, ey? Ohne, ich weiß nicht, wann ich kontern muss. Dann nehme ich auch gerne offen so zu. Es ist halt ein bisschen schwierig. Es ist echt ein bisschen schwierig, hier herauszufinden, wann du wirklich kontern musst. Alles klar, ich habe sie nicht einmal getroffen. Oh, äh? Ach, Sprung. Weißt du, ich finde das so dumm einfach nur. Wann muss ich denn das machen, ey? Ich meine... So dumm einfach nur. Es ist so dumm. Also es funkt, man kann kontern. Eigentlich... Ach, ich muss das später, wenn ich fertig bin, nochmal gucken, wie das geht. Es geht auf jeden Fall. Ich muss im richtigen Zeitpunkt selbst, glaube ich, angreifen, aber... Hm. Ja, geht doch. Hat funktioniert, siehst du? So, ich habe mehr Leben als sie, das ist ja schon mal etwas, was nicht so schlecht ist. Alter, boah, diese Kamera, ohne Spaß. Ja, wo ist sie denn jetzt? Ich sehe sie überhaupt nicht. Kein Plan, wo sie ist. Aha. Ah, okay, dann ist sie halt da. Mein Gott, was soll's. Ich weiß immer noch nicht, wo sie ist. Ach, da hinten. Weg. Geh ich gar nichts an. Ah, Schusswunde, ey. Hä? Der Verband war es, okay. Okay, ich muss versuchen, hier jetzt... Naja, nicht funktioniert. War, glaube ich, zu früh. Ah, schüttel mal auf, Mann. Das... Alles klar. So, wir sind ungefähr gleich auf jetzt. Oh, scheiße. Wir sind ungefähr gleich auf. Das bedeutet, ich werde mal kurz Nahrung zu mir nehmen. So, so. Okay. Und jetzt leben wir genau. Wir haben noch Zeit. Wir haben noch Zeit. Okay, da versteckt sie sich. Hä? 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 So dumm einfach, ne? Ach komm, Mann. Hol einfach in die Fresse und gut ist, ohne Spaß, ne? So. Hä, wie soll ich das anders machen, ohne Spaß? Ich glaube, das brauche ich gar nicht, ey. Ich brauche, glaube ich, nur das Messer verbinden, gut ist. Ach, schon wieder nicht, Mann. Ah, doch. Nein! Oh. Ach, Alter, das ist so eine blöde Hure manchmal, ohne Witz, ne? Es ist so nervig, Mann. Jetzt fängt die auch noch an, mich die ganze Zeit zu kontern. Das ist doch so ein schon Kotschen, ich hab kaum noch live, ey. Wenn die mich jetzt nochmal trifft, bin ich tot. Nein. Ach, komm. Alter. Heads up, Snake. So. so ein Witz. Ja, ich weiß, five more minutes am Arsch, ey. Ich muss jetzt hier chillen bleiben, ich brauche Leben. Ich muss jetzt erst Leben regenerieren, bevor ich weiterkämpfe. Schön in Deckung bleiben. Oh, komm schon. Yes.
take this. Keep it safe. It's our only hope. There's only room for one boss and one snake. 